create a channel to join the chat? What is this? Uh oh, that's not good. Maybe I'm logged in into the wrong. I think we're live. Are we live? All right. Yeah. It says live. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe I'm logged in into the wrong. Oh, here we go. We live. All right. Yeah. It says live. Okay, here we go. <laughs> we're live. And my AirPods are not working. One job. He had one job. One job. Why? Why? What's? What the heck's going on? Hello? It sounds fine on my end. I can hear you. Huh. AirPods are not working. Well, let me just quickly say this. If you are tuning in after the fact, uh, <laughs> check the description box below or the comments for the time code for the topics that we'll be talking about in this video. Verdell says you can hear both of us clearly, but I think Jason just can't hear us, so... He's completely giving us the silent treatment right now. He just can't hear us one bit. Hi, everybody in the chat. How are you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the potato quality this evening. Um, let me go ahead and increase my bandwidth a little bit here. Not sure if it'll get any better. Uh, let's see. Yes, we are live. <laughs> oh, people be spending some money. Checkity check so, one two hello hello so, so potato <laughs> so potato are we are we both potato probably not Jason though I mean let's see. I'm looking clear you can even see the pimples on my face nice. awesome okay uh, I was having issues because like I connected my AirPods to the razor so the razor is trying to steal the connection from the AirPod. oh he's blaming the tr the razor now okay damn razor <laughs> all right. <laughs> What's going on, guys? We're still in pre-show mode right now. We're going to start the show in about nine minutes. So, uh, Danny, you said hi to people yet? I haven't like mentioned anyone specific other than Rodell mentioning. Uh, so the audio sounds fine. Just cool. Kidding. Thanks, Rodell. Chris, what is up? Darktron69, Mr. Frankie, Michael Cunningham, Oreo, Orio, jean Lou, welcome back. And Manuel, that's too many... Uh, Manny Mans right there. Manny Mans says, please say hi to my wife, Maria. What's going on, Maria? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, hello there, Maria. Daniel Schiffer said, I just ditched dinner with my family to watch this stream. Oh. Oh, man. Daniel. So much dedication, you, man. You didn't have to, man. I don't I don't know if this is live is worth your time, especially I with all know, the potato quality going on every day. Uh, Victor Col Victor Cologne's like potato is an understatement. It's poop emoji. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know if you guys noticed, but inside the uh, on the title of the of this video, there's a little potato right next to Monday Live. Are you, so. are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I want to always put that there. I think I'm just gonna replace the red dot symbol Man. with the potato. So people will oh, shoot, I'm gonna try to get some better. Just go somewhere else. Go to the Starbucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> will it have better internet though <laughs> you'll probably have like those people with like their iMacs and their like mixer boards and everything just set up on, at Starbucks stealing all your internet making beats watching movies watching some questionable things stealing up the bandwidth I don't know man just too much too much variable <laughs> happening at Starbucks uh see here mr o o granados say hi to my girlfriend ethlin ethlin hopefully, hopefully i said that right ethylene? wow ethylen we're saying we're saying hi to many people's significant other yeah Viv vivian is around but she just went out but yeah she'll be back soon you guys can say hi to her then she watches me you're gonna have to go back to the luxor for non-potato quality <laughs> Go back, go back to Vegas. Exactly. Just move to Vegas. Is that what you guys are saying? I mean, what houses are cheap in Vegas? That that is true. I, we were, we were, it, we were is it cheaper? I don't know, but way more affordable than. Well, I don't know. Maybe in your area, it's not bad, but here in LA, we we're like we we're like talking to Francisco and Ashley, and and we we're like pretty much telling them the price of like. An apart buying an apartment here and we're and they're like with that kind of money we can buy an entire house where we're living i'm like <laughs> like we can buy a three-story house with 
um, for what you're paying in LA. We can build a photo. We can build two photo studios for the price that you're paying here in LA. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. Patrick also says, go back to Vegas. Damon Hart, is she playing games? No. Razor's back there, untouched. <laughs> we, we tried playing um, Fortnite. Have you heard of that, Danny? I've heard all my students talking about it. They're trying to live stream that stuff. I have I have not played it, but um, Fortnite's, it's, I don't know. I'm getting confused. Is Fortnite like Minecraft or is it PUBG? It's, 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 <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I have no clue. Like I don't play a lot of video games. So it, 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 I feel like it's, it's like, PUBG. I don't know. It feels like it's PUBG. It's like one of those like Team Fortress kind of deal. Mm -hmm. You ever play okay. Fortress? No, Except I, you, can, like, you can build I, forts. I just remember my college roommate, he'd be spamming that clicking button while I was trying to sleep, and, and my eye started to twitch. He just keeps spamming that clicking, clicking, clicking. I, it was just driving me insane, man. Oh so I never God. I never went back to my... That was like my last year of school. <laughs> and that was like the last time you ever played any sort of video games. Oh, man, I got I got my Switch over here. It's right here. I got my Switch, too. It's In the, far, Where is it at? That's right. Side. That's right. <laughs> Jason Bonds making some videos. That's what he's been doing. Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying. I should have to edit a wedding. That's that's what's like. Oh, oh right okay. Uh, barely made any progress on that wedding. Oh, whoa, whoa. Ashley is in the house. She said, uh, "Missed, missed me in L.A." Sorry about that. I wish I could have gone. She went. I would have had to ditch work, and it would have been a problem. John Botto, Jason, did you get the 16 to 35? Not yet. I am still contemplating. I might head up pro support to get a loaner and just to like play with it for like a weekend and see. But I might have access to one in Mexico, so we'll see. Maybe I'll rent, maybe I'll borrow, maybe I'll buy. Well I've got I've got my 16 to 35. <clears throat> we'll talk about it later though. Oh, 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 new new gear jumping ahead of ourselves here, man. <laughs> oh, Boris is in the house. What's going on, man? Boris, what is going on, Boris? Carpe Jacks, never seen a live stream this clear. Using DSLR should be the standard. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's is not mine a DSLR. It's a, it's a mirrorless camera. Am I still on potato end here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it still, it still looks better than a webcam. <laughs> but it's a little bit pixelated. pixelated. Uh, Mike17. Go ahead. Is asking how often do you guys rent lenses? Well, if you are part of Sony Pro Support, you can actually try out some lenses. And memberships only one hundred dollars a year. Plus, you need some stuff. Did you renew that? I have not renewed, but maybe it will come up soon. Did they email you or something? Yeah, I already made. I made the payment and everything already. I renewed for like another year. Yeah, so Mikey, I I usually just ask, and then they'll, they'll usually send it over if they have it available, and you can test out the stuff. And I also uh, I rent from Lens Rental as well, so. Um, whenever I get a chance to, I want to try something out. I'll just rent it from Lens Rental. Yeah, shout out to Lens Rental. Um, we're, not sponsored Beamer, right? shout out we're not, we're not, but we, we want to be. <laughs> 2005 Beamer says, shout out to the new Sony Imaging Pro Support Center in LA. Great support, quick and fast service. We got another testimony out in the chat about Sony Pro Support. That's good. That's good. Yes, PUBG is like, it's more PUBG. PUBG with Minecraft is what people are describing. Fortnite. Jean Louis saying, "Have you guys seen David Osler's response to the angry photographer?" I have not. I got to see that then. Oh man, more juicy drama. What is going on? <laughs> oh, I have. Maybe J David will join us. I, I got to check that video out then. Yes, if D David Osler, if you're in the house, <laughs> put us put us up to speed with what's been happening. Who's who we got to beat up? Let's know. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just like release a new video or is it from yesterday? Because I saw a video. It seemed kind of, let's see. Hmm. What is going on? Let's see here. Jelly says, or July says, uh, hello from Canada. You know what? Someone from Vancouver came all the way down to LA for the Sony event, Danny. What? Yeah. It's not Dar Dar was it Daryl. Was it Daryl Hoshing? No, no, no. <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was. Um, I think his name was Jeremy. Jeremy Chang. So oh, Jeremy, wow. you're in the house. Thanks for coming all the way out, saying hi. Hey. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. 
J. John Botto. Jason, did you get rid of your crane too? I still have the crane too. I have the so. crane too. I have the new smooth four, which I need to make a video on. <laughs> um, crane plus sold the crane V two. Oh, crane one is on an indefinite borrow from by somebody. Let's see here, and he's asking if I still use the Sigma eighteen to thirty five to be. Completely honest, I don't use it very much at all. Um, it might be a, a like a one time thing if I'm recording something, but it's not a it's not a daily driver. Let's put it that way. Awesome. All right, cool. So it is seven p.m., guys. Welcome back to another Monday Live or Potato Potato Quality Podcast, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I am your host, Jason Vong, joined by my co-host, that one camera guy. And my real name is Danny. There you go. Yes. Should have been the other yes, way around. But. Yes. So today we're going to be talking about um, what gear do you bring with you on your travels? I'm curious, what do you put in your bag? What are some of the lenses and the cameras, maybe the mics, the monitors that you choose to bring on your travel, whether it be for vacation, for jobs, or some personal videos? I want to know the ideas behind the things that you bring, your essentials and all that. So we'll definitely get into that topic and about 10, 15 minutes, so get those responses ready for the chat. But first, we'd like to start off the show with hashtag new gear. Let us know right now in the chat with the hashtag new gear, what new piece of gear that you just picked up recently. And uh, I just saw a super chat donation, by yep. the way. There is one. Jason, lovely, lovely Jason. Thank you so much again for all your support. Uh, his question is, is the 24 to 70 F4 really worth it? I keep hearing it isn't. And just to get the 2.8 version. Danny, actually, I'm going to answer you, that. I'm going to answer, answer that in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We're going to answer that in a little bit. So <laughs> actually, you're up. You're up first on the yeah, new gear list. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, I did go ahead and purchase a new lens. I mentioned it last week. It's already in. It's I'm actually using it right now on my A7R3. It's wow. the 16 to 35 F4. Um, and I... The reason why I went ahead and picked it up was that I, I've been on with Canon. I've had the 17 to 40 f4. I never had a problem with ever getting an f2.8. I was always very happy with using an f4. Um, and I never, and I thought 16 to 35 was going to be just fine. I didn't want to spend two thousand dollars on the G Master lens. And I know right now you're thinking about it, aren't you, Jason? A little bit. Oh, yes, yes, right. I'm so, about it. um, I figured. For the most part, the I, I'm I'm comfortable with the high ISO performance. Some folks have some questionable results. You know, some people have mixed results with their 16 to 35. I don't shoot landscape, uh, where I think it you know complete and good sharpness might be important to a lot of people. Um, I'm still using it, and uh, I just want to make sure it's just you know it's a solid lens throughout in terms of sharpness, but it doesn't have to be extremely sharp. And uh, I just kind of justified it in my head. So I got mine for about eleven fifty in terms of the price. Um, but yeah, that's my 16 to 35 F4 purchase. I don't know if anybody in the audience has the Sony Zeiss 16 to 35 F4. I would love to know if you do. I had it and then I sold it for the bad, the bodice 18 2.8. I just needed that 2.8 aperture. <laughs> the thing is, I just I I wanted it because of the sports. Because I would yeah. shoot with the 10 to 18, and there's times because I, I want to pair it. I want to have a, a telephoto zoom lens and then an ultra wide where I can get some really interesting perspectives and shots that I wouldn't be able to get if um, the problem with the 10 to 18, it's not designed for full frame, but you could use it. It's just the distortion is just really awkward. And, you know, I just wanted to have a native full frame piece of glass instead of just trying to work with this APS-C piece, uh, the 10 to 18, though I, I, I do enjoy that lens. And the F4 is great too. I, the 16 to 35 was a fantastic lens when I used it. They do say it's subtle, you know, somewhat not, it's somewhat soft, but uh, so far I, I'm liking the quality. Maybe it's like an issue from lens to lens. So we'll definitely use some tests to make sure mine's all right. Um, okay. But yeah. And then um, I don't know about you, but I got an email from one of my viewers. He um, he said there was a special deal going on on eBay that there was a 20% off. Jason, did you hear about this 20% off on eBay? Yeah, Mr. Alex Sandoval <laughs> told me he had Sammy. <laughs> it was like, there's, I don't, there's a huge discount happening. I was like, yeah. why didn't you say so sooner? Maybe I would have bought that 16 and 35. 
Let us know in the comments if you caught on to this 20% eBay deal. Anyway, so well, here's what happened. I, I was eyeballing some lenses. I wanted to get the G Master 24 to 70 f 2.8. Okay, that's the one I want to get personally, right? But it's two grand. It's like $2,100 with my EDU discount, $1,950. And I just need a, a, a consistent 24 to 70 on Sony email. I just needed something that was just consistent in that range. And um, so as you know, with eBay's discount, I was just searching online for everything and anything that I could buy. And I stumbled upon, I think it popped up. And honestly, I think the sale, this item popped up the last 30 minutes before the coupon ended. Because I was searching, right? I was searching for the 2470 F4. And then all of a sudden, I, it was I had about thirty minutes left, maybe twenty minutes left, and all of a sudden I see it's twenty four to seventy. It's seven hundred dollars, right? With the discount, it came out to six hundred bucks. Wow! So I got a twenty four to seventy f four in really good condition from the seller. It it basically said hardly used at all, had a filter since day one. Um, it looks really clean. It because I know I don't know if you've ever seen it, Jason, and those of you in the in the chat. Sometimes the Sony Zeiss it gets scuffed. I don't know if you've ever seen it, like the um. A portion yeah. of it gets scuffed like on the lens. It kind of shows up later. It gets white. But this one didn't have any of yes. that at all. So I placed the order and that was that. So 600 bucks for a really nice looking 2470 F4. So to answer Jason's <laughs> question, do you, you, you would think the F4 is good enough. You don't really need a 2.8. It depends if it's your only lens. <laughs> I think if you're going to, it's hard. It's a hard answer, right? Because look, I can take my 24 to 70 and I can bring a prime lens. I'll be fine. I can get some shallow depth of field if I needed to. If I was just doing some general photography. I would just bring a 24 to 70 F4. I, it works. It would work for me, what I'm doing. It's not a big deal. But if I think you just wanted one lens, um, yeah, the G Master is the way to go, I would say, with the F2.8. The only problem is, is that the price because I got mine for 600 bucks, I was okay with that. <laughs> I was perfectly fine with that price. If you're paying $1,200 for the 2470 F4, then yeah, I would have some second, I would be second guessing myself. So I guess it's just what you're paying for the actual lens. Uh, yeah. If you're paying, so, if you're, yeah, go ahead, man. No, so I, so I was saying like, because you got it at such a, at such a great price, because I was wondering, I was like, why didn't you get the 24 to 105 instead? Oh yeah. But but seeing as how you got the 24 to 70 at such a great deal, I can see why. So Jason, yep. I mean, like you have two options. You have Zeiss 24 to 70 F4 or the Sony 24 to 105 F4. And in my opinion, I think if you're looking for a zoom lens and those are your two choices, 24 to 105 would be my pick. Yeah, I, I think that's still the better choice uh, if you want no compromise in terms of what you're getting. But you know what? I'm just going to play a waiting game a little bit longer. I think some prices will dip here and there. So I'm just going to wait a little bit longer and maybe sell the 2470 later. Because I, I got it at a good price. I, I, I think if I resold it later, I wouldn't lose much. So I'm just going to install a little bit longer with that. So I'm happy. Awesome. I'm really happy I got that deal. So awesome. there you go. Cool. I'm going to read off. Uh, let's read off a few of the Gears new chat. Gears new, yeah, no, new sure. chat. <laughs> <laughs> New chat's gear, and then we'll jump into mine because I do want to spend a little bit, little bit uh, time with the with the razor. So first off, um, we got Chris Die New Gear Two Flashpoint Evolves Two Hundred Twin Head Transmitter and a Godox Mini, and Mister Roderick. L I'm sorry if I butchered your last name. Lasarna, Lasarna. Yeah. New Gear Bodice One Thirty Five. Congratulations, ah. sir. Congratulations. <laughs> What, should have waited for the Sigma 135. <laughs> no, he probably got it at a really good deal. They were running $500 off of that lens. So, what, $1,500 for his ice spot is 135, 2.8. Great, great price for that. Andrew Wen, new gear, 40 millimeter f2.8 macro lens. And Go Damon Hart lens. got the 24 to 105 f4. It says shipped today. Nice. Nice. Damon Hart, I hope you got it because Danny and I did a video on it. We were very happy with that. <laughs> David, David Osler, oh God, <laughs> the angry photographer is not happy with me. Oh David, God. I'm going to tell you, I mean, he wasn't happy with me and I shot up to 30,000 subscribers in the summer. So it might be a good thing. Anyway, so moving <laughs> on. <laughs> you just got more subscribers, David. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, I see that we have some questions. So save the questions. We'll have an open Q&A towards the last 10 minutes of the show. Um, AD Positive Bodog. 
New Gear Coral Savage Paper from Sammy's on Friday. Oh, I should have came on Saturday. That's when I was there. <laughs> Fathom, Fathom Rocker, Rocker. New Gear. A7 Mark III and the 85 1.8. Nice. But is that all the only lenses you have, or do you have other lenses? <laughs> Wait, still, still a great um, combination right there. Michael Smith, New Gear Magmod System. Very nice. Cool. Play with them gels. Patrick Ramos just picked up the 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master. Sweet. Very nice. Jason, new gear reserve, my second A73. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's why it's back ordered, guys. Just letting you know. <laughs> You'll for sure get your first one, but I don't know about the second one yet. Mr. Orgranados, uh, Canon C100 Mark I with a Sigma 17 to 70 new gear, waiting for the FS5 Mark II or the A73. Nice. Nice. Damon Hart, new lens, same potato quality. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Arr. Arr. Uh, Michael Schmidt, new gear, new or seven inch feud monitor. Very nice. Creative Films, new gear, A7R3 small rig cage. Okay. The H Zone says he pre ordered the A7 Mark III and canceled four times. A what? He says, I'll stay with what? my trusty Alpha 6500 for life. Okay. Was he thinking, was, were you thinking like, I need it. I don't need it. Cancel. I need it. Don't need it. Cancel again. What was that? It, what was it, it happens. Process? It happens. I want to know what is your thought process? You know, you should just kept it there until like the very, very like last day and then cancel it if you really didn't want it. Because you've been, you've been resetting your queue every time you, you, re, you, you re pre order. Just, just upgrade on the lenses zone, H zone. <laughs> That'd be good. She, Michael Schmidt, new gear, actually old lens, the Sigma 24 1.8 macro, just for fun of the old Sigma look for video. All right. Devin Ron, new gear RX10 Mark IV. So happy with this so far. I love uh, the RX10 Mark IV when I tried it out. Really it's nice uh, camera setup. It's fantastic. Um, let's see here. To Tomas, Sigma 16 mil 1.4. Can't believe it isn't an art lens. That thing is Freaking sharp, I was dude. really what? close to buying a copy, Jason, with the twenty percent discount, but then I saw the twenty four seventy f four, and I said, "I I really like this one over the Sigma," so I went. Yeah, there. yeah. A so APSC is dead. Any <laughs> <laughs> book, APSC is dead. Uh, uh, it's tough. It's tough. I I didn't want to buy an APSC lens, man. It was tough. Uh, C to forty nine er says new gear Godox X Pro S for the Sony. So much love. Is that the hey, new, that's, the new, that's the new trigger, right? I got it too. I actually, I actually didn't mention it, but I did order it. That's the, that's the new trigger, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a new trigger. I ordered. It. Yeah. I went okay. I, I saw Francisco using it. And I'm like, and he was like, "You got to get this one." And I was like, mm, "Yeah, I feel like I'm missing out." How much? How much was it? Seventy bucks, and then there was a five dollar discount on Amazon. There was like a five dollar discount. Oh Jason gosh. will put a link down below if you want to go and pick it up. Cool. I need to be reminded though. John Louis <laughs> Imperio, new gear, Rotolite Neo Barn Doors, waist leg utility bag to carry the gear. What? Let's see here. Dominic D, use the eBay 20% off to get an NPFC 100 battery for $62. Well, where, Dominic, where did you go? I went on eBay. I could not find a single NPFC 100 battery. Where, where did you find it? Because I, I considered it. I can see the darkest corner of eBay. What the heck? <laughs> uh, Jason Levine. Um, whoops, I scrolled past it by accident. A7R3. A7R3. Said, yeah, go ahead. 16 to 35, 2.8, 85, 1.4, and the 100 to 400 soon. Nice. You're going to love that 100 to 400, especially with the A7R3. It is a monster. John Bado says, I bought a 24 to 70 F4, like Danny, and a 35 just got 1.4 for $1,600. Oh. Are, you, are you in the US, John? See, I would not buy that 35 for $1,600. I would try to shoot for $1,100. Like what, $1, what if he bought both of those lenses for $1,600? That's a good deal. <laughs> that's good deal. that's, <laughs> that's what I deal. interpreted. That's what I interpreted. Well, that would be right, about right. I got mine for six hundred, my twenty four seventy, and the distant guy maybe a thousand to eleven hundred. Okay, moving on. That's a sweet deal. JP uh, got the two the Sony two X teleconverter, which I don't like too much, but that's awesome though. 
<laughs> Dominic D, new gear, screen protector, makey battery grip, spare FC100 battery charger in preparation for the arrival of my new A7 III. Okay. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. JP, Adorama was blowing out the baddest $135 for $1,100. What? what? Jason Bong, I am and so this, sorry. This, when did this happen, man? What? $1,100? What? Bucks. I, need, I need links. I need photographic evidence. <laughs> Pics or it didn't happen, JP. Send that to me. It must have I been don't like believe. used. Might have been used. My, okay, if it's used, okay. But damn, that's a good price. They said Adorama had the batteries. I checked the Adorama eBay store. It wasn't there. Maybe it got all sold out. Maybe they had like a certain you know set they could sell. Maybe I got to it too late. Cool. And we're gonna read uh, two or three more, and then we're gonna move on to the next topic. Uh, John Bottles is new gear. Sam Yang fourteen mil Cinelens. Uh, Alex Sandoval new gear finally got the Pixel Two XL. <laughs> <laughs> I heard. I heard Alex got it, and then what ended up happening was it was supposed. To, it was said it was delivered, but it went missing, right? But then he contacted right. Google, and Google Google just went and sent him another another two XL, and now Alex has two copies of the two XL, right? Alex, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll be gladly uh, take one off your um, hand. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Alex. <laughs> send it on over. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the new Pixel X two XL twos. Uh, okay. Nathan Valise says, new gear 15 mil, Lawa 0D for the email for my A7 III. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Awesome. Okay. Danny, is there any, uh, anyone you want to read out? I think we got, we got to jump more, over to more. you now, I think. One more? Okay. All right. Okay. Moving on. So for my new gear, I got the Razor Blade 14 inch. It's a new, it's, it's my new laptop. Got it for editing. The specs on it is 4K. Uh, it's a 4K screen, 512 gigabytes, uh, GTX 1060. I'm saying all these things like I know what I'm talking about, but supposedly it's really good, right, Danny? Help me out here. Hey, guys, it's Austin. <laughs> 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 the specs on paper look really good on this Razer laptop. The GTX 1060 is, uh, I have it on my Dell Alienware. It does a really great job with editing 4K. I don't have to transcode. You know what, really, I are you going to talk about why this ended up happening, why you ended up getting it? Yeah, yeah, we had yeah. Let me, let me, let me talk. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we had this. Okay, okay. So if you haven't been following me on my Instagram stories or watch the unboxing video, pretty much why I got the Razer Blade was because I was with Danny in Vegas a couple weeks ago, editing on my <laughs> MacBook. I was using Premiere because I was, I was trying to get out of the Final Cut phase, just want to move back to Premiere, <laughs> render in some proxies. And Danny sitting sitting across in the other room was just chopping up the 4K footage that he got like butter, like it was oh nothing. And I was just God. like questioning my existence in the Luxor room. I was like, I actually chuckled a little bit because because <laughs> I saw because I went into the room and Jason said, "Hold on, let me go ahead and, and render these files out." First, I'm like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> so all the footage he had recorded, I think this was from that uh, from that Sunday shoot. I don't remember what it was, but you were like transcoding all this footage. I'm like, "I don't gotta do that. I just gotta load into my computer and start editing right away." <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So th at that pretty much at that point, I was just like, when I got back home, I was like, <laughs> "I'm gonna get." I want to get a laptop and I've been eyeing the razor blade for sort of a while now. Um, I saw the laptop at CES and one of the reps there who happens to be a fan of our videos, uh, oh. kind of point me that direction. He was like, yeah, check out the blade. It has some really good specs can be used for editing. It's a gaming laptop, but has great specs for editing. So that's kind of been in the back of my mind for like a couple of months now. And then after seeing Danny's amazing alien where shred through the 4k, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna check it out and see what it is about. Oh, yeah. have you ever visited the Reddit thread for Razor? Did you no. actually? Have it, I want it, you. I want you to go to it after the show. Go to Reddit and go to the Razor thread, and I want you to read it. Okay, go through this. Show. It's become a help desk support for the, the Razor laptop. Oh gosh, is it a crap show? <laughs> what am I, am, I, am I gonna expect? Am I? I mean, it's, it's the same with crap storm it's, it's, it's similar to the Dell XPS 15 that I got. A lot of people had the same issues that they were they were having buggy issues with their model. Yeah, so, so um, <laughs> I'm I'm aware that the Razer has um, some really bad customer support. At least a while ago, I'm not sure if it's still now or like when when the Blade first started coming out, it was like pretty bad. But I think um, 
I think uh, Linus did like a follow-up video saying that it has gotten better, and, and at least laptop performance. Um, and then our good friend Lee from Zed Pro Media was like, yeah, man, my buddy was cutting 8K raw footage off of his at one eight quality. It's a good laptop. And I was like, all right, Lee, you sold it to me, man. I'm just, I'm just going to get it now. So, so far it's been, it's been good. I mean, Premiere is running fine. I love the fact that I can just like throw in the 4K files and just nice. start editing right away. The last couple of videos, that's what happened. I just, I shot 4K on purpose, even for things I normally wouldn't just threw it in there to start cutting and it's great. I just loaded up a big wedding file on it right now. And so far it's handling like mm -hmm. a champ. Mm -hmm. Got it plugged on my ultra wide monitor. Everything is still working fine. Uh, the only issue that I've been having with the laptop is that the fan oh. does get really loud from time to time, but not, it's not constant when it needs to like run through, chew up something heavy. It would be like, Psh! but other than that, it's been fairly decent. Yeah, I think that fan is just going to run unless you want to do a repaste on the on the CPU. I don't know if the GPU can do that as well. Um, I I have no clue. On another another viewer <laughs> told me that to do to do something like that too. He did something. He did some modification to his razor blade and. Yeah, yeah, let us know in the comments in the chat if anyone else has a razor blade or your thoughts on it or what laptop is your daily driver. Um, but I did consider doing a repaste on my Dell Alienware thirteen R three. But what really sucked is I got really close to opening up the C get to the CPU already. And then I hate when I you deal with a screw that does, doesn't come off easily. And I dealt with that and I just said, screw it. I'm just not going to do the repaste. Although it would have helped with the temperatures. But um, yeah, repaste usually will help. But I think it'll void your warranty. So yeah, it probably yeah you might want to. So. I, will, I will wait until my warranty goes out first. Then did we'll you, did yeah, you get see, it straight see. from Razor? I got it straight from Razor. They were okay. uh, over the weekend. They were running like a, a five hundred dollar five hundred dollar off the 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 darn thing. Mm -hmm. um, I got it a day a couple of days before that, so I'm getting a price adjustment for that. But yeah, it, it had a it had a pretty big discount uh, over the weekend. What was what did it come out to, man? It was uh it was eighteen ninety nine before tax. Okay, and I I I think like before that I paid like only about a hundred dollars more, so I'm getting a price adjustment, getting that hundred dollars back. But yeah, yeah. The, the hard part yeah. though, Jason, right now is that um, later this year we're probably going to start seeing six core CPUs in the, <sighs> in the the 15 inch models. That's, yeah, that's that's what I'm worried about. I mean, like, am I am I send gonna it, send it back? Send it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. true. It's the, the six core uh, mobile CPUs are going to come around, but they might be slightly. They might be. They're probably going to be underclocked. Um, so they might not have the same horsepower. But you're going to start seeing six core CPUs soon. This later this year. Yeah, I was so, watching Dave Dave Lee's video, and he was like, "Yeah, the new MacBook 15 inch will probably come out with the six core." And I'm like, "Ah, yep, wrong wrong time to get a laptop." Imagine oh. like by the summer, you see a six core uh, six core Razer laptop. For the same <laughs> price, I'd be, I'd be so mad. Oh um, man! But other than I that, know. um, I am su I am having some. I'm suffering from some bad ecosystem problem right now. Like I've been so used to my Mac. Where the command and control keys are, I'm missing AirDrop. Even the emojis look terrible on the on the Windows laptop. I'm just like, gosh, it's gonna take me a while to readjust to Windows. Guys, let me show you how I do my AirDrop. Okay, so my laptop has a cable. I plug in a USB Type C into my phone, and I transfer the file. That is my AirDrop. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a line drop. That's not, that's not an airdrop. Oh my god. Oh, uh, dude, that's what I do. I edit my photos and I just connect it straight to my phone and transfer it. Um, <laughs> I don't do, I don't do. it. It was cool when I saw you were using that airdrop to transfer files with another person. But yeah. I mean, hey, I, nah, it's okay. It's all right. I have I have to use some something else called Send Anywhere. Pretty much, I upload the file onto a browser and then use my phone to either receive oh. or actually use the app on my phone to send and receive. So that is my current solution for airdropping stuff to and from the Razer. So much work. Just go back to your Mac, man. <laughs> Wait till that six core comes out, man. Yeah. Uh, well, if the performance on Premiere is better, then sure. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> all right let's answer a few questions and then we'll jump into the main topic of the video all right 
Let's see here. Um, JP has followed up with the uh, one 135 for eleven hundred dollars. He said a couple of guys got the bodice one thirty five new for the from Adorama. You had to call in and ask. What? <laughs> that is back order right now. Well, let me get them a phone call and tell them no. <laughs> what if that? What if it just like twelve ninety nine becomes a standard price for that bodice? I think that's why I'd be happens. so mad, dude. Like I bought it only a couple months ago. I paid seventeen hundred dollars for it. Hey, but hey, I mean, it's like my A nine's only worth thirty five hundred dollars now. I mean, it's all good, man. <laughs> Prices dropped just too fast. And then the A seven says, the... "Uh huh, go ahead." The A seven three just killed a bunch of prices, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> basic motto. <laughs> Jason says the Apple gods will punish you. They already are punishing me. Uh, let's see here. Let's see the H zone says we have fifteen percent tax on PC. Q fans says that's why you should stick with Final Cut Pro, Jason. I can't. I I try using Final Cut and open minded for about it for six months now, but there's just a certain little thing that just just irks me that. What is it I though? Well, it's like a cross one thing crossfading audio um the magnetic timeline i kind of got used to but it's just like the layers i'm just so used to the layers on on premiere that it's just it's just kind of hard for me to not be able to do something like that on final cut i mean they have their I, own ways yeah. of layering things but it just doesn't work the way that i'm i'm so used to i would I, I don't know if i would enjoy using final cut based on how I edit, but I mean, like I said, I, it's kind of like a rethinking. You got to re relearn this whole system. And, um, but I just like premiere. I like premiere. <laughs> yeah. I like premiere. It's a little slower. I, I would admit, yeah. but, um, Max Europe did a, a really good video on the performance of the final cut. Like even the Max that have the uh, crappier specs than your, your windows laptop because of how efficient that it runs on a Mac. Final Cut just outperforms like Premiere. Oh yeah, absolutely. A lot All of the ways. time. All the time. Yeah. Let's see here. I see some questions. Hang on to those question tight guys. We're gonna answer them in the last ten minutes of the show. JP asks, why not the Razor Blade and the Razor Core? I've no clue what those the, ra the Razor. Entails. Oh, the other Razor is like a. They have a quad core model now, so it's it's like a MacBook. Air, this is kind of put in that framing, right? They have like a MacBook Air kind of style laptop. They do have quad core models now. I think they have quad core capabilities. And you're going to use the Razer Core, which is an external GPU, to power your laptop. That's what they're talking, you're going for. So you have a really powerful oh, okay. mobile laptop that you can just take, take notes, maybe some light video editing, some light photo editing. But once you connect it to your external GPU, take advantage of that for your video editing needs. Oh, so got it. Got that's it. what they're going well, for. I I just want to bring that one thing without having to carry a external GPU with me around. So I just want yeah. it, want everything just work by itself. That's, that's all I need. Speaking of which I got the 4k model. I was going to go 1080, but man, the 4k is so much sharper, so much brighter. It is good for content creation. 1080 is fine for gaming, but content creation, you gotta go 4k. Yep. It's just going to kill the battery. But you got to be plugged in for that. Yes. Uh, David Hart says, I have an XPS 13 at work. Nice. Clay Terrell says, my razor blade is a Gillette Fusion Pro, Pro Glide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Nice. Love it. Damn you. <laughs> Hugh Fans says, why did you switch from Final Cut to Premiere? Most people do the opposite. Like, no, no. So I did switch to Final Cut for a little bit for my YouTube videos, but I've been Premiere all my entire life. I've never fully left. I've been using Premiere to edit my weddings, and I've been using uh, Final Cut to edit my YouTube videos. But after a while, I'm just sticking purely to Premiere. JP says uh, six core this year, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 next year. Oh, what the heck? Is he talking about Max? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Man. Six cores can be crazy. But I don't know. GPU prices have gone up. So the 1060 is actually a good middle ground. I like the 1060. Uh, Patrick Ramos says, you can use iCloud on Windows. Drop the files in the iCloud to get them on your phone. Easier workflow, Jason Vong. Patrick Ramos, you are the man. I would I would try that. Just to use the good old cable. <laughs> <laughs> I want that airdrop. 
Oh, Oreo ask. Oh wait, no, that's a question for later. Okay. The Arctron 69 says, I have a Dell Alienware R417 inch with a 1070 GX, and I have a new, I have, he did the, the thermal paste. Yeah, so yeah. He basically he did the repasting. He took the CPU and GPU and took the, the heat sink and repasted it, uh, and he got a 10 degree drop in temperature, or 10% drop in temperature, which is good. Nice. Uh, we're gonna ask, we're gonna go through a few more comments before we jump into the main topic of the show. Uh, show Zet Pro Media says, "What up, dudes? Premiere for life." <laughs> yes. Yeah, man, it's it's so hard to use. I, I'll I'll try final final cut a little bit more, but I I yeah. blame you, Lee. You're the one who gave me that extra push off the edge. That's why that thing is sitting right behind me. <laughs> Let's see here. Awesome. Geotherma says, glad I grabbed the 1080 Ti for 700 bucks. If I waited, it'd be like $1,200. Man, those GPU prices are bananas right now. I have two 980 Ti's right now. I, they're actually worth more now, I think. All right, they, their value went up. So anybody want one for crypto, crypto mining? <laughs> <laughs> is, my, is this good for crypto mining? Uh, you could probably offset it to do some while it's not working, but why would I don't know if you want to stress your laptop more than it needs to, you know? Yeah, nah. all right. One last one JP says, I had the Razor Blade 14. One drawback I found they use higher power rated power supplies, and it's hard to find a third party adapter. Don't lose your power supply. LOL. Woo -wee. I've been good with not losing chargers, so let's hope I keep up that streak. Nathan says, if you're wanting to upload to Instagram, just download Flume. Does Flume allow you to post stories? Or does, just wondering. And also, is it Instagram legal? Oh, whoa. Oh. And also, do they let you post multiple images in, a, for example, when you do a post in Instagram, you can do 10 images. Does that allow you to do that? Anyway, that's just some questions I had. All right, moving on to the main topic of the show at 7.30. Uh, I want to ask you guys, what gear do you bring with you on your travels, whether it be for vacation, for work? What are some of the essential piece of camera equipment, lenses, mics, lights that you would take with you? Let us know, uh, whether it be for vacation, for work. Let us know the reasoning behind each camera, each lenses. Let us know by using the hashtag travel gear. And the <laughs> reason why... I am bringing this up because in about a few weeks, I'm heading out to Mexico. I'll be going to, <laughs> I will be going to San Miguel de Allende. That's how you pronounce it. And it is an event that's put together by Sammy's and Sony's, uh, by Sammy and Sony. And they got me out there to be filming Scott Robert Lim's workshop. So he's going to be mm -hmm. out there with 12 students, I believe. And he will teach them how and where to compose the right shot in an unfamiliar location, how to find great lights, um, pretty much posing lighting in a foreign, foreign area. Yeah, I don't know. I'm probably not doing a job <laughs> his workshop, but I'm out there to capture, to do a little travel video for them, um, as well as grabbing some content for the channel. So I'm very excited for that. And I want to share with you guys some of my, gear that i'm planning on bringing so i'll be doing video mainly uh gonna have my a7r3 gonna be bringing the 24 to 70 f 2.8 g master Ooh. for um versatile versatile uh, versatile zoom lens um for telephoto i'm thinking either 85 or 135 but probably gonna go with the 85 just to be safe and had a dilemma in the last video uh, about the 16 to 35 f 2.8 G master or the 12 to 24. Not sure which zoom lens to bring, but I'm leaning towards the 16 to 35 right now. Going to be bringing a road mic, a wireless loft mic, the Zoom Crane Plus, the DJI Mavic Pro for some epic drone shots, and of course, the Razor Blade. One of the Ooh. biggest reasons why I got the Razor Blade is because I want a travel mobile editing station that I can cut 4K footage right away. What if there's no battery power? What are you going to do now? Then F my life. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get I need to get some adapters, right? I don't know what kind Be of careful, plug man. Use. That, that laptop's going to get hot. Jason, that laptop's going to get hot. You know what else gets oh, hot? 
Oh, shh. Uh, <laughs> let's, not, let's not bring that in. Um, Jason, you know what would be a really cool challenge? If you could only choose one lens for this trip you're going to, and that was the only lens you could bring. Let's say it's too dusty, you can't switch stuff out. You only had one lens option. It's not one of those. It could be any lens from Sony, uh, whatever. What would it be? Yeah, so I thought about that. It'd be the 16 to 35 f2.8. Whoa, really? Yeah. If it's the uh, one, because here's the reason behind this, this, this whole reason why I'm considering the 16 and 35 in the first place. It's a versatile zoom lens, and it's a travel video. Want to have that flexibility of getting an ultra wide angle shots of where we're at. You know, who knows where we're going to be, maybe in a tight area, small area. Want to capture some of the landscapes that's out there, maybe tall buildings, big buildings. And if I need a closer zoom range, um, I can zoom to 35. Use Super 35 mode to really push the uh, focal length that I can achieve mm -hmm. out of that lens. So it'd be like around 50, I think, at most. So 16 and 35 would probably be the most versatile lens for for travel, in my opinion. Uh, I thought he was going to say the 24 105, but uh, interesting, interesting. Oh yeah, 24 to 105 <laughs> would be a good one too. 16 to 35. I I, I really want to play with that lens when I'm out there. So uh, either I'll rent it, I'll buy it, or maybe I'll <laughs> have a chance to borrow it. Jason's going to buy that lens. Nice. Maybe after the trip. If next I get it, next I'll, I'll get week, a lot. Jason will have the 1635 f2.8. Yes, nice. either before the trip or after the trip, I'll have the 1635. Place your bets. Place your bets. Is it before or after? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and hopefully I'll, get, I'll have a chance to play with the a7 III since Sony will be out there. And maybe I'll have some out to um, let people play with. But we'll see. Definitely want to capture some video footage with that... Uh, 4K oversampling uh, from the A7 III. Awesome. All right. So, which brings me to you, Danny. I mean, like, you've been traveling a lot recently. I mean, what have you found to be <laughs> essentials for your for your trip? You, you know brought what? a lot of stuff to Vegas, man. I'll just say in general right now, when I go to work, I in my uh, Peak Design bag, I have my, my A9 with a battery grip. It's got the 100 to 400. I got that there. And now I got the A7R3 with the 16 to 35 F4. And I might pop in like a 55 F1.8 Zeiss. Those three lenses and two camera setups is usually what I'll bring. Uh, just if I'm gonna shoot, right? On a daily driver for me at work. Mm -hmm. I don't even I don't even use my 7200 2.8 too much right now. Um Same. just enjoying. Um travel wise, I mean. I think I was going to travel again, like to a faraway location. Like when we, or I guess that'd be for me. Like when I went to New York, um, I think I would just try to bring one, uh, use my phone. I'll use my phone and <laughs> I'll use my phone, bring a gimbal and try to do most of my filming with my phone and bring one camera and maybe two lenses that I would use for testing or review. That would be the kind of the motivation to bring something like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. When we went to Vegas, I just brought a bunch of bunch of stuff. You know, I brought this Sony 18 to 135. You want, go ahead, man. You can go for it, man. Oh, no, that's what I was going to say. Danny was, he brought like an entire library with him because I was trying to coordinate with him. I was like, Danny, what lenses are you going to bring so we don't like, you know, have have a, have a repeat lens when we're out there. We can just help each other out, you know, like trade lenses, borrow each other's lenses. So yeah, 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 yeah. Bar borrow them lenses. <laughs> <laughs> I stole his 24 to 105. He did. Um, he did. <laughs> this guy brought a 16 to 70, 10 to 18, uh, 18 to 105. He brought like he brought all the all the zoom lenses, all the running gun zoom lenses. I with just him. I just brought this. This is this is what I brought. It's my. It's not from Pelican. It's from SKB. I really like it. It's my show and tell today. You know, I just I just I just brought this, and then I brought was that, was that everything that you brought to to Vegas? Is it? Maybe I got small HD. I got a sixteen fifty kit lens. I brought like three sixty three hundreds. I brought two sixty three hundreds and a sixty five hundred. Um, I got a metabones, oh a metabones here, dude. I, this is the wrong video to do this. I got to save this for a video, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is an overkill, and you brought so much to Vegas. Yeah, you know the thing is, it, this stuff lives in my case, so that's why I just rolled it out. It, it's literally always set up this way. So I was like, I'll just roll it out. I mean, it's all good. 
Okay, and 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 and, and I got to be clear. The reason why we were able to bring this much gear to Vegas is because we drove to Vegas. We didn't fly to Vegas, so we had a lot more uh, 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 flexibility to actually bring a lot more gear than than we can. Otherwise, I'm sure if we flew out. We would be even more limited to what we could bring. But now he brought the whole shebang with him. <laughs> So what what is something that you brought that you thought you would use a lot, but not end up using at all? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. The initial intent was to go in and test out the Sony 18 to 135, the 24 105. So whether regardless of whatever I had brought to Vegas, those were kind of the two things I was going to I was testing out, even though I didn't really test it as much as I wanted it to. But uh, that's a different issue. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know, man. I, I really would just bring, uh, like I said, I, I, I'll i use my phone in terms of just taking stuff for travel and then um, maybe my RX100 Mark V. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, see, the trouble with us is that what Danny and I do, we make these YouTube videos, right? We can't just bring one camera. We have to yeah. bring two because we have to have one camera that films us yeah. using the other camera that we're testing. Well, no, it's an issue. I mean, because look at it. When we when I had gone, I was like, crap, I need to make sure I have a Metabones or a Sigma MC11 adapter. What if I got to test a Sigma lens? You know, you start thinking all these different scenarios, and it's kind of like a race to the finish. You want to try and get your uh, uh, get your content out there. So, but I saw so many things, man. Too much gear. But, Too much gear. Yeah. Awesome. Let's jump into the chat. <laughs> Unless, Danny, you have something else you want to add to all this? I, no, I, I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's about it okay let's jump into the chat and see what you guys have to say about the gear that you would bring for your travels jason thanks again for another super chat donation take the fuji instapix <laughs> i don't have that one oh, let's see here um ch -ch -ch -ch. okay so we got some questions. I'm uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Raymond Vasquez says uh, 6500, six, Sigma 16 millimeter and 30 millimeter in a P Design 5L bag. Very nice. Rodell says hashtag travel gear, A6500 plus 10 to 18 and a 24 to 240. Very nice. That covers all the range right there. Trying to find a chat. I'm lost. Okay. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll read a few more first then. Uh, Valentine. Sorry, but I can't. I can't pronounce your last name. Pen Creative says Jason haven't traveled much. Why don't you tell which is the best gear to use when you are traveling? Just don't stress yourself out. Bring one camera and one lens, like we were saying. Uh, my choice would be the sixteen to thirty-five or the twenty-four to one hundred five. Yeah, I think that's the best way to go. You don't want to switch lenses out too much, and you just want to enjoy your travel. That, it, that's yeah. what it boils down to. And like I said, I think it. I get, you must, you, you probably have gotten that question so many times, Jason. Like people are always asking, I'm going to go on a trip. What's the one lens setup I should get or what should I buy? And it's really tough to recommend for APS-C. I would say, you know, what's interesting. The 18 and 135 might not be bad. I didn't get to use it a whole, I didn't get to use as much as I wanted to test. Um, there's a 16 to 70 to 18 to 105 F4. Um, people are always asking about. So yeah. a, a versatile zoom lens for travel would be the best. I, I remember when I went to Japan a few times with Vivian and she can, she can vouch for me on this brought like three freaking cameras with me. It was a pain. Three different, yeah. three different cameras and like several different lenses, bought more lenses in Japan. So there was even more to worry about, but keep it, keep it simple. Just one camera, one lens, max two will throw in a prime lens if you want, but that's yeah, that would probably be the extra thing as a prime lens. Um, John Botto, travel gear, A7R3 with the 35 Disagon for shooting trike patrol videos. I don't know what trike patrol means, but I don't know what I just said. Yes. Um, hopefully nothing too weird. <laughs> I think nothing, nothing too offensive. Um, <laughs> okay, Danny, there are a few super chat donations coming in. Yeah, they're popping in. They're popping. Okay, in. all right, we got to get through them first. Okay, all right. Um, with a uh, wiki rascals art says travel gear. Will you, will you time lapse since we need an intervalometer with the a seven R three love the Manfrotto advanced active backpack for travel. Do you guys like Osmo for travel favorite travel tripods? Ooh, that is, that is a lot of questions right there for nine 99. Um, 
I probably would not do any time lapses when I get out to Mexico. I mean, I'm ho hopefully someone else would bring an intervalometer, but I, I personally won't be bringing that. I won't be bringing a tripod. I don't think I will. I'm just going to stick with the Zillion Crane as my only gimbal and my only support. Um, as for Osmo for travel, is that the DJI Osmo? Jason, can't talk talking about, about those things. I can't talk about those things. I can't. Yeah, I can't talk about that. Maybe Danny can help me out. <laughs> My favorite travel, Osmo, but favorite so. travel, but favorite travel tripod um, would be the Manfrotto B Free Live Video Fluid Head Tripod. That's super light, incredibly light. Love the thing. But Danny, I, what do you say about it? I have that B Free tripod. It's still in its bag. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the Osmo, what I will say is I've used it once and I like it a lot. A lot of people, I, I feel like a lot of people who are just making videos as a hobby it's a pretty good device to get some really solid and um uh, stable footage this is before i became so you an ambassador so i can come uh, with that. geotherma don't let them kid you take an iphone and a 30 foot selfie stick travel bag done there you go it's all you boom need. there you go it's all you need there yeah, you it's go all you need michael mr pierce jv drinks on me in mexico have fun buddy Thank you, Michael. Thank you again for your generosity. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Alex Sandova. Alex Sandova says, I'll bring my A7R2, 16 to 35 f2.8, my ND filter, which I will also bring a couple. Mavic Pro, MacBook Pro. That's the main stuff. And the rest of the small essentials like extra SD cards and cleaning gear. Yeah, that's important. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for the super chat donation. Um, try, let me, I'm gonna try to go back to where we left off. So if we missed your comment, sorry, just post it again. Um, uh, the H zone travel gear. I travel light 6,500, 18 to 135, like Danny suggested, 55, 1, 8, Sigma 16, 1.4, all fits in the peak design 5L bag. Wow. Good. Uh, Chris Dye. Travel gear. I take all of my gear. I only get gear that I can travel with. Oh, wow. Let us know the specific and details on what it is. Uh, JP, travel gear. iPad Pro with Adobe CC for on-the-go editing. 70 to 200 for, compressions, for compression landscapes. Mm. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people just straight up edit on their iPad Pro. You guys are using the Lightroom Cloud, right? I should give it a try. Yevin Juice, just sorry, I've got that wrong there. Nikon D5500, Sigma 17 Nikkor 514, Polaroid camera, DJ Mavic Air, Osmo Mobile, Narbox for backup and editing. When I don't want to bring my MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina, iPhone 7 travel, hashtag travel gear. I think they're rubbing it in, Jason. Yeah, they are rubbing <laughs> it in. But I hear great things about the Narbox. Maybe I should try to get one. We'll see. The Narbox sponsorship, please. Um, LB Dew says, so you shoot handheld videos for travel? Um, yes, but I'll also have my gimbal on me. So, Ryan yeah, Tong, travel support. gear. I bring my Sony A6000, 18-105, Sigma 30 millimeters, and Xeon Crate V2 plus Magnum Latex plus Joby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Practice, practice safe shooting, guys. Uh, JP, travel gear. Can't forget the Arsenal from Kickstarter next month. What is the arsenal? Let us know. And Michael Peter says, hey, Jason, tell Vivian that the pinky grip works so good. I love not having the weight of the battery grip. I might even start using it for weddings and work. It's that good. Thanks. Thank you. And she said thanks. <laughs> the only thing is that it, it, it does block the, the, the battery, correct? You have to it take it does. off. But you know what? What I noticed with it is that um, you know how the part you unscrew from the um, the quarter inch, it's very easy to take off. So you can swap the battery and you can swap the battery out really quickly. So it's not hard to take it off. Steve Smith Similian. <laughs> Travel Gear A7R3, Sigma MC11, Tokina 1735 F4, Alawa 15, Sony 55, and Peak Design Sling, mainly for landscapes. Astro and street shooting. If I had more monies, I'd get the 85. Very nice. You got that all covered with those ranges. Except for the 85, of course. Uh, let's see here. Hugh fans is travel gear, iPhone 10, DJ Osmo Mobile 2, E4K action camera, tripod, and an Anchor 20,000 milliamp 
power bank. Ooh. WRX Mike, travel gear, peak design everyday 20 liter, Fuji XT2, 16 millimeter F1.4, 35 F2, 20,000 milliamp battery, six batteries, two extra 64 gigabyte cards, Mi Photo Globe, Traveler, CF Tripod. 20,000 batteries for the Fuji XT2, man. <laughs> that, 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 needs, that thing needs a lot of battery. KC Lee says, I take less underwear, more lenses. Hashtag travel gear. I like the way you think. <laughs> That's what I. That's what I did for like France. Like I packed less co less clothes on purpose, just so I could fit a tripod inside. <laughs> JP says, "Did you bring all that stuff that was in my little Pelican looking case to Vegas for Sony free support cleaning?" I didn't. I got some stuff clean, but I didn't get all that stuff cleaned though. You should just roll your own entire case. You know what? Now that you say that, I might consider it next time. <laughs> David Hart, travel gear. When I go backpacking this summer, I'm going to take the A7 III with the 24 to 105 and probably allow a 15 mil. Keep it simple. I like that. There you, you go. Let's see here. JP says, I invite my girlfriend on travel so she can carry more of my gear on her carry-on. Hey, how'd you know? I do that, I do that with Vivian too. <laughs> Let's see here. Patrick, Patrick Ramos. Ramos. Go Travel ahead. gear, Peak Design 20L, Sony A7 II, Sigma 35, and the brand new 85G Master. Woo-wee. Very nice. Awesome. We're going to read off a few more uh, comments from you guys, and then we're going to jump into the news really quickly and then open Q&A. So Mako says, Travel gear, Sony PX WZ90. I assume that's some sort of camera. Sony wireless lock any backpack nice keep it nice and simple minimo T tiny truck climbers travel gear mavic air 6500 24105 low pro pro tactic 450. let's see here masmo one travel gear a7r3 24 to 105 and a voilander 41.2 let us know how does that voilander uh it's working out for you all right jason what do you want to do you want to keep going Oh, yeah, just a few more. All right, Ellie Mele, or Millette, travel gear, Sony RX-10 Mark IV, A6000, Sigma 16mm F1.4, 35 1.7, 55-210, Mavic Pro, 2017 MacBook Pro, newer carbon fiber tripod, and Evercase large capacity backpack. Man, this is a bad idea. I'm getting gas now. I want to buy so you're much getting, more stuff for this travel. You're getting regrettable gas, or you're getting constipated gas? Constipated <laughs> gas. Everything gas. <laughs> uh, all right. Last one. Um, let's see here. NZ Travel Gear 6000, 10 to 18 F4, 16 to 70 F4, Sigma 31.4, Chrome Industries, Nico Sling with a Peak Design Capture. Very nice. Awesome, guys. So we are going to jump into the news really quickly. But before that, start queuing up your questions. So there's a lot of questions going on right before the show, during the show. So just get them back onto the chat right now by using the hashtag QA. And when you use that hashtag, that's when we can find your questions and actually tackle them. So uh, rumor has it, the news uh, for the news, rumor has it that Sony will announce a Sigma, uh, sorry, not Sigma. <laughs> Sony wait, will wait. announce a 24 millimeter 1.4 prime lens. It's because Sony um, Alpha Rumors used a Sigma picture instead. That's why I got confused. But Sony is going to announce their own 24 millimeter 1.4. I assume nice. G Master lens. I assume it's going to be full frame, right? Yeah. It's going to be beast. a wide angle 1.4. Kind of wish it was a 20 mil, but. I think 24 is a very common focal length to get. So 20 well, millimeter. Well, there's that Tokina 20 millimeter F1 point. No, F2? Was it F2. F2, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the Tokina Furin. Yeah, the Tokina Furin. Whatever whatever it is. So let us know, guys, if the 24 millimeter 1.4 is on your radar to pick up, if Sony does indeed release one. Other than that, good news for the EU folks. I believe you guys already got your A7 III shipped. Oh, out. man. What the heck is, is it, going is it on? If there is in stock, guys in the UK, let us know. Are you already touching your A7 III <sighs> and laughing at us on the comforts of your own seat while you're watching this live show? <laughs> you just, and I should have just ordered it. To just order from the UK, man. Just order from, you know. Yeah. Yeah. UK. You, oh, I don't even know if they're watching us right now. It's pretty late over there, right? Yeah. Well, if you're in the EU area, let us know if you have the A7 III already. Or Take it's some on pictures, the way. Tag us on Instagram. Yeah. 
or is on the way. Take a picture, yeah. take a picture of it, send it to us, tag us on Instagram. We'd love to see it. Yeah. And uh and a news topic. Item. And yeah, a news topic ahead, I wanted to hit and added there uh was I think Cinema 5D uh did an interview with Sigma's uh president, I guess. Uh you know, something I've been kind of wondering, and I think some of you might have been in the same boat. Uh the new Sigma lenses, the Sigma FE lenses, if you look at that, um the back end of that lens, it, it, and we talked about this last time. It looks like they just mounted a Sigma MC11 adapter, right, Jason? With yeah, their Sigma lenses. it's just it just makes it a lot more bulkier than it needs to be, right? And so, what I really want to know, uh, and obviously, there's no actual tests yet from reviewers, is whether or not the FE lens will perform better than a Sigma MC11 adapted Canon lens for for Sigma, basically. Uh, and so from the interview, the Sigma president mentioned that there are some limitations that they have when using the Sigma MC11 adapter. So you can't get that full 100% um, compatibility with the actual Sony uh, camera body. You can get close, but not 100%. So the implication, I guess, from their interview is that these new Sigma FE lenses are designed and redesigned in such a way that they're going to perform and work much better. Because I think that's what I'm really wondering. Is it... Should I, for example, sell off my Sigma 35 1.4 Canon uh, EF mount and get the FE mount uh, from Sigma? Is it going to perform any better? So it looks as if this is going to be the case. You're going to get much better performance from these lenses with these with the native FE mount through Sigma. They basically said it is. Um, they even said the peripheral illumination correction data should work on the Sony with these lenses, unless they were talking about Canon lenses. But uh, they were saying the peripheral illumination correction will work. Yeah, that's good news. That's some good stuff. It may not look super yeah. pretty to folks, but I, I just care about the function. If it does well, I'm all for that. For me, it's going to be the aesthetics. It's just going to look like an extra thing is sticking out. So you're going to get your, the, the Sony lenses, I'm going to assume, is a tad bit, a little bit longer than your EF and uh, the Nikon counterparts. So, But I, I'm sure a lot of folks out there would not mind about that extra length. Should be good news if the performance is going to be there. Awesome, awesome. All right, Q and A. Here we go. Q and A. Let's do this. Level nine Chow says, "Uh, is that from Sonic?" Level nine Chow Q A. Will the <laughs> will the sixteen to thirty five G Master with newer Sony FE? What? I I don't understand the question. Will the six will the sixteen to thirty five G Master with newer FE Bozies? Okay. Uh, ask, ask that question again. Not, not too quite sure. All right. A question um, does, that I've been, sorry, let me get this one real quick. Yeah. A question that's been popping up from H zone is, uh, he's asking 70 to 300 versus the 7,200 for the alpha 6,500. Um, I don't know which 7,200 are we talking? Was it the F4 you're talking about there? Yeah. Yeah. Four. He said F4. F4 originally. Right. I think it just depends on what you need it for. I think, um, I, I I would prefer shooting with the Alpha 6500. I would go with the 7200 F4. But if you know you need that that reach, then I would go with uh, we go with 7300. I would go with the F4. Cool, awesome. Gusty Dandy says, should I wait for the new Tamron 20 to 75 or just buy the Sony 20 F2 and the 85 1.8? I don't know when the Tamron is coming out, but. I would say if you need the lenses now, get the 20 and the 85. Danny? I, I didn't quite catch the whole question. Sorry. I can't. Oh, he's he's just wondering if he should wait for the new Tamron 20 to 75 or just buy two prime lenses, Sony 28 and the 85 1.8. Ooh, that is tough. They're kind of in that same, that, that, that one zoom lens kind of covers that range. Yeah. Um, it is tough. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. I can't, I can't really, you got to yeah, know what it's you just want. A it just depends if you have the patience to wait out the Tamron to 20 to 75. I think it should be coming out in the next few months, but don't Who quote knows? me on it. No one knows. No one knows. Jason says, which flash unit should I get for the Sony a7 III? I do a lot of event photography. Definitely check out the Godox or Flashpoint um, speed lights. Those are some really good ones. Um, that particular brand, a lot of Sony people are shooting with. So look into Flashpoint slash Godox. Matthew Cunningham, Q and A. What is the best zoom lens for low light for a six thousand? Um, all of the zoom lenses, unless you buy full frame, go don't go below f four. 
Don't go below besides, three point five. Yeah, three point five. Now I was, <laughs> I guess. But I mean, being being literal here, F four is kind of where it's at. You'd have to buy like a full frame sixteen to thirty five F two point eight or something like that. Yeah, that honestly would be my suggestion too, unless you're willing to adapt a Sigma eighteen to thirty five one point eight. But I would just buy yeah. buy buy some zoom lenses, man. I, buy some prime lenses. <laughs> Buy some prime That's lenses. a tough one. There's there's no one good answer for that one. Sony has a um, yet. Jarek Odak says, when is this Sony 24 1.4 lunch date? <laughs> no clue. But um, there is no announcement in terms of when it's coming out. It's just a rumor right now. All right, level, level 9 tells... Oh, there you, you go. Now. Go for it. Um, it's yeah, basically it. asking, is a 1635 going to balance on a Crane V2 or Crane Plus? with a a7 III, for example. So um, hit me up on Instagram. I'm going to try to see if I can get a hand, get my hands on a 16 and 35 this weekend, just to try and test out. Definitely. I personally want to see if it will hold on a crane plus. So that's definitely going to change some plans. If it doesn't. Jay Sands asking Q and a, are either of you interested in becoming a Sony artisan eventually? Not gonna happen for me. <laughs> Danny. Danny sealed his fate. Yeah, um, yeah I don't. Yeah, yeah, that ain't gonna happen for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Just well, we'll just we'll just we'll just leave it out there wide in the open. If we all if petition, the opportunity comes, if we put, if, if we petition comes. that you can't go wrong with Jason Vong, maybe someday, maybe someday can't go wrong with the Vong. Can't go wrong with Jason Vong. I just remember that. Um, let's move on. Let's see here. Um, Mako Sports. Jason, have you considered picking up an FS5? Yes. <laughs> All yes, right, moving on. Probably not. <laughs> yes, but probably not. NDL. Should I get the Sony 7200 F4 or 7200 F2.8 for photography? Uh, versatility. The 2.8's really great. F4, if most of your stuff's in the daytime. For the most part, that's what yeah. I would say. Need more information, but the F4, very solid lens, very sharp. Yeah. Otto206 says, what would you recommend for a trip to Kyoto, Tokyo, Osaka? Bring my A7R3. Um, you talking about lenses? Um, I, in this current state of mind, like I said, I'd probably go over the 16 to 35 F2.8. But the most flexible zoom, in our opinion, is a 24 to 105. BMB Films, Tamron 85 or the Sigma 85 Art? Wait, Tamron has an FE now? For or they're talking about the Tamron VC 85. There's a VC model. Um BMB Films, if you have a Sony, I would just get the FE version of the Sigma 85 Art, right? I know. <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing any more questions. Am I caught up, Danny? Uh, I see some questions. Should I keep going while you're trying to find it? Mine just stops literally. So yeah, if you have any more questions, go for it. We'll, we'll go on All for right. another three minutes. JL Venture says, how come there are no reviews comparing the a7 III and the a7S II for low light video? Which one would you pick for wedding videography considering sometimes you run into low light situations? So Jason, you'd be a great person to ask about this a7S II versus a7 III. Um, they, from what I'm hearing, um, I think they said the A7S II only has like a one-stop advantage in terms of low light if you compare it against the A7 III. I haven't personally seen a test footage like you've been saying, um, but that's not bad. You know, if, if that's the case, that's not bad. And I honestly would choose the A7 III. I shot weddings without the A7S II for quite a while now. Been using lights to light up the situation. I feel like you're going to be fine without the A7S2. And I think the benefits of the A7S3 is, of course, the bigger batteries, the dual SD card slots. If you're using native Sony lenses, the autofocus is going to work way better on the A7S3. Plus, the video quality is going to be slightly crispier than the A7S2. So, my pick, A7S3. There we go. Um, Tomas asking, are we going to see 60 FPS this year from Sony? 4K 120 FPS competing with the GH5, GH5S? I don't think we're going to see 4K 120 FPS, but 60 FPS in 4K is got to happen. I would say yes. that's it's that's, got to happen. That is what we're hoping. Chris Dye, Q&A, thoughts on buying lenses off of eBay? Does eBay cover you if something is not right? Yeah, you can return it. 
If it's not to the description uh, when you purchase it, you can definitely return it. I've never had any major problems with that. Um, okay, okay, I see a question now. I have to like close the chat. Yeah, uh, Yev Yev Hen says, um, want to buy a Sony sometime soon? Should I go the A7 III away for the 6700? I'm not in a hurry. I'm mostly interested in video. Also, what should be my first class? If you're not in a hurry, just wait it out, to be honest with you. All right, JP's asking that one camera guy, why are you why are the hesitation on the 2X teleconverter? I I personally have never liked the 2X teleconverter on my 70 to 200 G Master. It's soft. I don't know if it's my copy. It could be. Um, but when I compare it to the 100 to 400 at the same at 400 five, six on my tel uh, on my lens versus the 2X teleconverter 7200 at, at uh, 400 f5.6 with the teleconverter, the native 100 to 400 G Master is just sharper. So that's the reason why I, I've never been a big fan of the 2X teleconverter on my end. The 1.4X, I'm cool with. I like that one. Cool. We're going to read a few more questions and then we are going to sign off. Hugh fans says, right. are you disappointed that the A6700 was not released with the A7 III? Do you think we'll get a flip out screen Z battery with the 6700 or should we wait until the A7000 series? I am not disappointed just because we already had a feeling that it probably wouldn't get announced. There's like a lot of signs that point to an A7 III versus an A6700. So I say uh, NAB just off the cuff. That's just, yeah. I'm still going to say NAB. Maybe it's going to be video oriented more. Um, yeah. Maybe it will have, I, I still say that the next generation A60, A6000 series is going to have 4K 60P. That's just my gut feeling. Yeah. yeah. So our guess is NAB or Photokina this year. So either April, October, we'll hear something about either the 6700 or the A7S3. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to read that. That's fine. <laughs> Let's see. JP was asking, um, how, did, how did Danny seal his faith with Sony? <laughs> oh, just, just watch some videos. Yeah, just, 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 just watch Danny, some of Danny's video. From the, um, from the summertime. Zangief says, asked, when do you think Sony will have 10-bit color for video on the Alpha line? We're hoping the A7S3, buddy. That's what we're hoping. And... Uh, Last but not least, okay. Last but not least, Michael, Jason, and Danny, what's your opinion on the speed of the A7 III being equal with the A9? Not the AF coverage, but the speed of the AF. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to be the same speed. I think in terms of just autofocusing, like it tracking, it's probably pretty good. But I doubt they're going to put a hundred percent to a hundred percent on the A7 III. I think it's good, but um. I'm just trying to justify my A9, by the way. Anyway, so um, <laughs> I think the A9 is still going to be the superior camera, though. Um, but yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. I'm, I'll do. I'm going to do some sports testing with it, even low light stuff on the A7 III. Like I said, when I tested out the A7R3 shooting sports, high ISO, the A7R3 lag compared to the A9. So I, I, I feel I'm going to get a similar situation with the A7 III. Very cool. Uh, I just see really a couple of easy questions to just answer off. Casey asked about a, ver a particular brand of a variable ND filter. I use Tiffin. Uh, Eli says, do you guys use a third-party FW50 batteries? What's the best brand? I personally use um, Wasabi. It's okay. It's not the best, but that's I what think I use. Doing, it's up. For video, you might want to stick with Sony brands. Just, yeah, I don't know. Just a thought. True that. True that. Awesome, guys. Uh, thank you again for tuning into this. I was going to say episode. Is this even an episode? You can thank you for tuning into another potato quality podcast hosted what? by uh, me, Jason Vong, and that one camera guy, aka Danny. Um, <laughs> next week, it's going to be on Danny's channel. Uh, Danny's going to have a lot of cool stuff planned for you guys. Maybe oh, what hopefully. The, when the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Maybe, hopefully, I won't be like this is for you. Hopefully, I won't be completely stressed out, but yeah, for sure, man. Awesome. Um, anything else, Danny? Anything uh, people can expect no. from you? Or No, absolutely nothing. Just follow me on Instagram. Uh, shameless plug, that one camera guy, if you're not already following me. Thanks. Yes, Danny has been trying to kill it on the Instagram game. He's been like shooting some really cool stories with his RX100, I believe. I haven't been you. <laughs> you have it, Danny. No, I'm trying to. I'm I trying just to hype people up. No, I, I mean I shoot with my camera and I just transfer the files. Just with my A7R3 or A9. You know, I mean. 
And he's been, po- he's been posting a lot of photo samples from his 100 to 400 or just any general lenses that he's been yeah. using. So if you're curious about how the 16 to 35 F4, or the 24 to 70 F4 is working out for him, follow him on Instagram. Uh, as for me, trying to tackle, finish up this wedding edit before I can move on to making more videos for the YouTube. But yeah, other than that, guys, thank you so much for another amazing a podcast sesh with you guys. We'll see you guys on Danny's channel next week. All right. Peace. Peace.